the next question. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ismail Shokri, a senior in university residing in California, USA. Dr. Zakir Naik, you have personally been such a great influence on my Islam. As a born Muslim, I became a Muslim by chance. Sorry, as a born Muslim, I became a Muslim by choice, largely due to your teachings, alhamdulillah. My question is this. I largely struggle with the balance between working for dunya and the akhirah. The greatest thing in my understanding that someone can do is either jihad with blood or money. Since in this era, there are no opportunities to correctly fight for Allah in wars, the only option for jihad is money. My family is not especially well off, but I believe I have the potential to make lots of money in business if I focus and work hard towards it. With my time, <laughs> with my intention being to do financial jihad in the future. Having said this, do you think my time is better off dedicating to generating large amounts of money by starting a business which I can then automate and incorporate dawah and other Islamic activities in my life or to focus on having money to survive and conducting dawah. Thank you so much for doing what you do. You are truly one of a kind and I sincerely appreciate what you do for Islam and what you did for myself. The question asked by Brother Ismail in short was that he's struggling between the dunya and the akhira and he's asking that will it be better for him because he thinks he's good in financials and he can earn a lot of money and he thinks jihad can be done only in two ways with blood and with money and now blood there is no scope so financial jihad is the only option remaining so should he do that or it's better for him to have a simple living and do dawah and become dai so let me correct your concept of jihad Jihad in Islam means to strive and struggle. And I do agree with you, there are various types of jihad. The highest jihad is jihad against your nafs. And as far as doing jihad is concerned, the number one is qital fi sabilillah, that is fighting in the way of Allah. And I do agree with you, it's the highest, and if you get martyred, you get a place in Jannah. But your question that there's only two types of jihad that is fighting and financial jihad you're totally wrong there are hundreds of types of jihad and i do agree the highest is qital in non qital jihad the highest is dawah is conveying the message of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the best and allah says in the quran in surah fusilat chapter number 41 verse number 33 woman ahsanu qala mimman allahi who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord? Says that I am a Muslim. Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Works righteousness and says that I am a Muslim. Here Allah says that the best profession that a person can take is that of a dai. So the highest profession is a dai. In jihad, one is qital, the other side is dawah. And for your understanding, where did you get this that there are only two types of jihad? I don't believe in that. There are various types of jihad. Highest is two types. One is jihad, that is qital, fighting the way of Allah, and the other is dawah, conveying the message of Allah. And one type is also, of course, donating money, struggling, striving. But in terms of level, it's among the lower level. And let me give you one incidence to clarify to you regarding your concept. Once Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, who was the second caliph of Islam, while he was sitting with the sahabas in a room, he asked them, 
that what would you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill this room up with so that you could spread the message of Allah. So one sahaba said that I would pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill this room with gold so that I could spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Umar, may Allah please with him, said, ask for something better. Then another sahaba said, I would ask Allah to fill this room with diamonds, rubies and jewels so that I could spend it in the way of Allah. Hazrat Umar, may Allah please with him, said, Ask for something better. Then the Sahaba said, Ya Amirul Mu'minun, you say which is better? What is better? So Hazrat Umar Malabi said that I would pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill this room with duats like Mu'ad ibn Jabal, Abu Darra bin Jarra, Abu Ubaidah bin Jarra. May Allah be pleased with them. The second caliph of Islam, he said, I would pray Allah for da'iz, manpower. And the manpower is multiple times much better than wealth. If you see the history and the seerah of the Prophet, the Prophet did not leave behind wealth. What did he leave behind? He left behind the Khulfa Rashidin. He left behind Sahabas. He left behind men who followed and expanded his teachings. Today in the world, the Muslims are one of the richest in the world. We have the wealth. Allah has given us the black gold, has given us the petrol. But where are we? We are large in numbers. But the hadith of the Prophet, there are time will come when Muslims will be in large number, but we'll be like froth. What is the use? Today we are looked down upon. So what is most important is manpower. So dai is multiple times more superior than wealth, than gold. So, between the two, that means asking for da'i is much better than gold, mountain of gold or rubies or jewel. I'm sure if you make yourself a good da'i, it's much better than a mountain of gold. Let me give one more example. Abdullah Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the good deeds done in the first 10 days of the Lajja, is much better than any other deed except a person who goes for Qital fighting in the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and goes and gives his life and wealth and does not return with it. But it's better than even doing jihad except a person gives up his life. And the Prophet said that will I tell you something which is better than distributing gold in the marketplace. So the Sahaba says, what can be better than giving charity gold? Imagine giving gold in the marketplace. What can be better? So the Prophet said, during the first 10 days of the Lajja, if you go to the marketplace and say the takbirat, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar, Walillah ilham. If you say the takbirat, in the first 10 days of Dilla and Dilhajjah in the marketplace, it is better than distributing gold. So you should clear your concept that wealth is not everything in Islam, it is the least amongst the hundred important things. The hundredth important is wealth. And I say that, that if you list the 10 most important things for Dawa or for Dawa center, the least important is money. You don't require, it's important, but the least important. And the best example is that, mashallah, we started an organization with a small budget of less than $100 a month, about less than $1,000 a year. We started with one person and later on, after several years, alhamdulillah, in a span of next 25 years, we became the largest private DAO organization with more than 500 employees, mashallah. So much so that it became difficult for the Indian government to keep us and the side legal allegation. And that was it because we were effective, alhamdulillah. And if you have heard me say earlier that alhamdulillah, I have dedicated my life for this 
for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I chose to become a doctor earlier thinking that a doctor is the best profession. It is a good profession, but not the best. But when I came in contact with Sheikh Ahmed Didad and I read about the Quran and the verse I started my talk with, Surah Fusilat, chapter 41, verse number 33. Woman ahsanu qala mimman doil Allah wa amilu salihaum qala innan mimil sumin. Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord, works righteousness and says that I'm Muslim. I realize that being a dai is the best profession. So I changed from a doctor of a body to a doctor of a soul. And Alhamdulillah, because my parents supported me, my brothers, my family, my sister supported me. I didn't have to care much for my living. And I became a full-time dai, mashallah. And so much so that my average staff that used to give time in the office, you know, they come for about 10 hours, they used to give pure 8 hours of work, deleting the salah and the, and the time for lunch, etc. On average, I used to spend about 17 hours in the office. So double than an average employee. In spite of this, during my other spare time, even though giving double time than an average employee of mine, or an average human being that can give eight hours a day, deleting the other activities in the office, I used to on an average give double the time, 16 to 17 hours. Then in my other spare time, after giving double time, I used to spend maybe a couple of hours in a week or maybe approximately a day in a month in doing business. And Allah blessed me that I used to earn millions of dollars a year. Alhamdulillah. But that was so that Allah has given me that acumen. And even though my parents supported me, when I started doing my business, I started earning more than the parents, more than my brother. And that is the reason the Indian government started laying allegations that Dr. Zakir Naik is doing money laundering. It's the money. Allah gave me the barakah, alhamdulillah. And nothing close to the Sahab Abdul Rahman bin Auf, where they said that may Allah be pleased with him. Whatever he touched became gold. When he went, when he migrated to Madinah, when people wanted to support him, he said, don't give me money. Show me the marketplace. He went to the marketplace and came back with goods. Allah had blessed him. I'm nowhere close to him, but Allah has blessed me also. But that doesn't mean I become a full-time businessman. Even if I earn a billion dollars and donate, it is nothing compared to the work that Allah has taken from me as a dai. Even a billion dollars is nothing compared to the work Allah has taken from me as a dai. Alhamdulillah. So, and my sister used to always say that if you would have spent your full time in business, you would have become richer than Bill Gates. But what is Bill Gates? Compared to the Akhara, nothing. So, please, my dear brother, you have been inspired by me. Don't get this in your mind that financial jihad. Yes, those people who Allah has not blessed to do dawa, and if they have got wealth, they are giving charity, Allah will bless them. But nothing compared to a time given by thy. Yes, if you don't have the blessings of becoming a full time dai and then you become something else and you great wealth, giving charity, fine. Again, as far as giving charity is concerned, I always say that the percentage is important, not the amount. And I said that several times, if a person earns a thousand dollar a month and he gives a hundred dollar, he'll get much more sawab than a person who earns a billion dollar and donates a million dollar. A person who earns a billion dollar and donates a million dollar, he is giving 0.1% of his wealth. A person who gives $100 after earning $1,000 is donating 10% of his wealth. That means he will get 100 times more sawab. So my policy was that besides being a dai, I wanted to give the maximum percentage that I could. And Alhamdulillah, I tell every Muslim that whatever you earn, start with at least besides giving your further zakat, give 10% of your earnings every month, every year. Then increase it to 25. Try and see to it you reach. If you are a dai, see to it you should give more than 50%. Minimum 51% of your earning in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep on increasing. And we have the example of Hazrat Umar may Allah with him. That when the Prophet asked the sahabas to give support 
for the cause of Allah, Hazrat Umar may Allah be pleased with him, came and gave 50% of his wealth. And he said, the Prophet asked him, what have you got? He said, I've got 50% of my wealth here. And when Hazrat Abu Bakr may Allah be pleased with him, he came. And when he donated, the Prophet asked him that, what have you left at home? He said, I've got everything in donation. I've left Allah and his Rasul back home. That means Hazrat Abu Bakr gave 100%. Alhamdulillah. So always the percentage is important, not the amount. So I would suggest what you should do is that become a full-time die. Even if you earn a thousand dollars, okay, take care. At least give ten percent in charity. The die that you are will get you multiple more sawab, will get you a higher level in Jannah than giving donation. Whatever you are, how much will you earn? A million dollar? Ten million dollar? Hundred million dollar? You can come nowhere close to getting the thawab of thai. And let me give you an example. That recently one of my good students who had done Dawah training program amongst my top five students, to run his organization, he started doing some business and he started telling people, okay, now I'm going to start business, you know, support me, this business will get money and with that money you start funding your Dawah. And when I spoke to him, I said that, what have you done? Brother, I train you to become a dai, not to be no, but you know, dawa requires money, so why should you ask people? And I am doing business now, and by business, I am making money. I said, okay, fine, you hire some other managers, no problem. But even if you earn a million dollars or ten million dollars, you will never get the same sawab as a dai. And what you are doing is, you are just acting like a businessman, and that's not your money also. You are taking money from other people. What you are doing? It's just doing a job of a person, you can easily hire a financial person and pay money, no problem. Let him do that. I have no problem in a Dhamma organization doing finance business for the works, no problem. But you don't spend your time. Normally when someone launches this project, they spend their time, they want to collect money. Waste of time. You are degrading yourself from a Dai to a businessman. A Dai is on top, in the Islamic top of the charts. And a businessman who donates is good, but no way close to a Dai. He said, okay, Jazakallah for the advice and hope I'm able to follow the... This is what happens. Let not... If now you're a full-time dai and quite effective, now you said I'll spend time in doing business or maybe you say... And when you start doing business, you start first with 50%, then 75%, then major portion goes. And we find many dai. What are they doing? They're going around collecting money for their centers. And 90% of the time they spend collecting money. Why? Instead of that... You go to Tajjud Salah. In your Tajjud Salah, if you have to ask, ask Allah. We started with a small amount of less than $100 a month. Less than $1,000 a year. It was mainly funded by my father. It kept on increasing till we could. And Alhamdulillah, even today, if I ask, number one person is to Allah. Pray in the Tajjud Salah to Allah. And inshallah, with all these problems, with many countries after me, my home country, the Prime Minister taking my name to win the election, coming after me, trying to put the Interpol, mashallah, Interpol is, is clearing me always, alhamdulillah. It is Hadam in Fadli Rabbi. Even today, alhamdulillah, because of the situation of COVID-19, when I phone many of my fans, and they are not in a position, Dr. Zakir, I know you are in a financial problem, if you want for your personal living, tell us. We will support you. One person says, I'll give you $10,000 a month. The other businessman says, I'll give you $25,000 a month. One says, I'll give you 100,000 years a month. If I collect all to put together, I'll get a few hundred thousand dollars a month and a few million a year. I tell them, Alhamdulillah, my requirement is very small. Yes, I stole billions of dollars before. Now I don't earn the same, but yet, I am earning multiple times today, much more than what I require. And why should I take from my personal thing when Allah gives me directly? Taking money for dawah as a salary is not haram at all. As long as you don't take more than what is the market value. So Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me. So this shows the thought of the Muslim Ummah that if they think I'm in problem, though they don't have finance to support, yet they don't mind supporting me personally. Allah has blessed me and I tell them, pray 
pray for me that I don't require any financial support. Allah Himself is providing. Alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah. And I always tell to a dai, see to it that you make your requirements least. See to it that your cost of living is very low. And that's the reason even though we earned millions of dollars a year, our cost of living was very less in Bombay. And even today in Malaysia it is less. For me and my wife to live only $500 a month. Alhamdulillah. And we are earning a lot yet, mashallah, a lot. Tens of thousands of dollars a month, alhamdulillah. Not the same as before. And major portion goes in charity. Major. The bigger portion you give, the better it is for you. So please, my dear brother, please keep this out of your mind. And I tell all the guys, all my students also, don't run after money, let money run after you. And money is not the most important thing for doing dawah. Please. If it's important, it's the least. And if you want to ask money, who is a better person than Allah? When you're talking about dawah, you okay, in the Sajjus Salam, if Allah gives you good, doesn't give you all the more better. Always remember, if you ask something and Allah gives you, Alhamdulillah, Allah doesn't give you summa, Alhamdulillah. Because first was your choice, second is Allah's choice. And believe me, money is never the criteria. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left behind sahabas. Manpower. They spread the deen, not with money. Today, Allah has given the Muslims money, black gold. Amongst the top richest hundred people in the world, I feel more than 95 would be Muslims. The Forbes list is just for people who talk about, you know, public listed company. The Muslims, they own private companies of hundreds of billion dollars. I know many of them personally. I personally know more than 50 Muslims who are much richer than Bill Gates. Where is Bill Gates? So please, money is not the most important at all. And we have to see to it that we become good practicing Muslim and die directly. So I'd like to tell my students and the people who are my fans that do whatever dawah you can do directly that the book. And if you cannot do, then that doesn't mean don't give charity. Give charity also. So if you're a dai also, see to it, make your requirements less. Whatever you earn, give maximum what you can. Start with 10%, see to it, you reach more than 50%. Even if you're earning a small amount of $1,000 a month. If you give 500 in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see to your requirement is less than $500, Alhamdulillah, that would be the best. So you have best of both. Also give charity and there are other ways of gaining sawab for charity like saying takbirat in the marketplace, much more than giving gold. Do you think you will be a financial wizard? Can you give gold in the marketplace? And the answer is no. So dawa is far superior. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He guide us to the right path so that we could spread His deen. Allah doesn't require you and me the rubbish that we are. Allah is giving an opportunity for us to easily go to Jannah by doing dawah. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He accept whatever little bit humble efforts they have put in His way. And may He guide us Muslims and may we all inshallah meet in Jannah Firdos inshallah.